Next up is Dr. James Boylan, Program Manager for the Georgia Environmental Protection Division. Dr. Boylan will discuss recent air quality episodes in Georgia. You're up, Dr. Boylan, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jim Boylan. I am with Georgia EPD, the um, Environmental Protection Division, and I am responsible for ensuring that Georgia meets the national air quality standards so everyone can breathe clean air. Um, also, I'm on the Georgia Prescribed Fire Council Steering Committee, and I do understand the importance of prescribed fires. So today, I'm gonna to talk about air quality trends, um, air quality impacts, and we're gonna look back over the last five years and see uh, what's been causing high um, concentrations of pollutants, and then look at the PM and the ozone air quality standards. For air quality trends, um, we have 22 PM 2.5 monitoring locations across the state. And you can see those on the map. They're, they're well distributed through, throughout the state. Um, the Atlanta area has, has more so because it had um, in the past had some high PM 2.5 values, but now um, they've dropped down and they're about the same as the rest of the state. So for each of those um, locations where we monitor PM 2.5, we have the design values, which is a three-year average. Um, there's an annual standard of 12 micrograms per cubic meter, and we've taken the highest monitor in each of the um, um, CSAs. And you can see that the graphs here that all of the areas in the state of Georgia are well below the annual standard. In fact, the standard is 12 and the highest value is below 10. So doing really well with the annual standard. The daily standard, um, the daily standard the, or the 24 hour standard is 35 micrograms per cubic meter. Um, again, all the areas are well below the standard. Columbus was creeping up towards the standard, but now it's trending downwards again. So that, that's good news for that area. Also, I'm showing here ozone design values and all the areas in the state, except for Atlanta, are well below the standard where the standard is 70 parts per billion. The current standard is 70. Um, all the other areas besides Atlanta are at 65 or below. Um, I would also like to say currently it, with the last year's data, Atlanta was at 73 parts per billion, but with this year's data included in there, Atlanta will be at 70 parts per billion um, as of right now, and we have one more month left in the ozone season. We don't have any high values. Um, Atlanta will um, attain the ozone standard. That's all good news as far as ozone and PM 2.5. Next, I'm gonna talk about air quality impacts. Um, so the first thing I wanna say is, um, what is PM 2.5? And uh, PM is a very small particles in the air and they can have adverse health effects on the heart. So I will be talking a lot about exceedances today, exceedances of the National Ambient Air Quality Standard. And an exceedance is a 24 hour measurement that is greater than 35 mic micrograms per cubic meter. Um, so I'll be talking about those. Um, what we also track are violations of the NACs. And the violation is really um, when we get into trouble, if we have a violation of the NACs. So for the annual standard, that is a, an annual average over three years being, um, being greater than 12 micrograms per cubic meter. And those were the time series plots I was showing before where I showed that we are well below of uh, this with the three year average and where the highest monitor is at 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Also the daily standard, which is the 98th percentile of the 24 hour values averaged over three years would need to be greater than 35 micrograms per cubic meter. And the importance of this is that you can have some high values, but the highest values get thrown away. So you can have exceedances of the standard and still be in attainments of the, of the standard. And that's what we see here in Georgia is that we have a number of exceedances, but we are still well below the standard and we are not in violation of the standard. So I'm gonna go through the last five years of PM 2.5 exceedances. Starting with 2016, we had a lot of exceedances in 2016 due to wildfires. And this um, is just starting out showing November 10th to the 13th. 
um, the monitors that we're reading, we even had a value of 101 micrograms per cubic meter at Rossville. And um, I'll remind you that the standard is 35 micrograms per cubic meter for the daily standard. So that, that value was significantly over. Um, all these caused by wildfires, which continued on November 14th, the next day, we had 17 monitors in Georgia go over the standard, and most of those were in North and Central Georgia. And then the wildfires continued November 15th, 16th, and 17th, and we had a number of exceedances at a number of monitors, and those are all indicated here. So, um, you know, we had those really bad wildfires in North Georgia, caused a lot of exceedances. Um, at the end of November, November 23rd and 24th, we had exceedances at Columbus, and it was determined that this was a combination of wildfires and prescribed fires that led to those exceedances. So moving on to 2017, 18 and 19. In 2017, we had two exceedances, um, one on March 17th due to prescribed fires and one in April down in Val Valdosta due to wildfires. And then as we move through uh, 2018 and 2019, we had seven exceedances in 2018, all due to prescribed fires, and seven exceedances in 2019, all due to prescribed fires. And if you've attended this conference in the past, you've heard me talk about some of those um, exceedances in, in detail. Moving on to 2020. Um, so 2020, we have had some exceedances. Um, June 26th and 27th, we had exceedances due to a Sahar Saharan dust event. Um, which is fairly unusual here, but it did lead to a number of monitors going over the standard. And on July 5th, we had an exceedance downtown Atlanta due to fireworks. Um, so I'll be talking about these exceedances in a little more detail. Um, but the most important thing is, as of today, there have been no PM 2.5 exceedances in 2020 due to prescribed fires or wildfires. So good job to everyone burning. And I, I'll talk about this in a little more detail as well. So I'm going to first talk about the um, Sandersville uh, exceedance that happened on December 5th, um, 2019. So this was the last PM exceedance that was due to prescribed fire. And um, I had not presented on this one before, so I'm going to briefly talk about this one. Um, this slide shows the, the concentrations at our different monitors. We have the hot spot down in Sandersville. We also have the red triangles. Uh, which are indications of prescribed fires taken from uh, acreage burn taken from the Georgia Forestry Commission uh, permit records. So you can see a number of uh, red triangles north of Sandersville. This is a time series plot looking at uh, the PM 2.5 concentration uh, throughout the day. And you can see that the values start to increase about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, this was likely due to the prescribed burns starting in the morning, and then the smoke plumes were transported to the monitor where it reached a value of over 120 micrograms per cubic meter, and then uh, slowly started to decrease. Um, even at midnight that night, um, the values were still well over the standard, but then they quickly dropped off the next morning. This shows the NOAA hazardous mapping system. Uh, this also includes satellite image. Um, uh, fires in the, in the red triangles. Um, and then it also has smoke plumes. So we can see the smoke plume models um, showing the high impact on Sandersville. And we also have satellite imagery um, from NASA where we can actually see the smoke plumes um, impacting the Sandersville monitor. And the, the red dots are satellite imagery of fires. And then finally, the high spit trajectory is just showing that the wind was coming from the north and moving down to the south. So if we go back here, we can see the, the winds blowing um, the smoke plume from, from the north to the south, hitting the Sandersville monitor. Uh, next, I'm going to move on to the uh, Saharan dust events, uh, just because this was very unique, uh, June 26th and 27th of 2020. Um, here's the locations of the exceeding monitors. We had a lot of exceeding monitors in South Georgia and North Florida. Anything in orange or red is above the standard of 35 micrograms per cubic meter. This is an image uh, from NASA. It's the Suomi satellite uh, two days before the, um, the ozone exceed, I'm sorry, the PM exceedances in Georgia. And you can actually see the Saharan dust being carried across the Atlantic Ocean 
and into the Gulf of Mexico where it circulated around into uh, Alabama and Georgia. This is aerosol optical depth from the, uh, from the GEOS analysis. And again, this is on the day of the PM 2.5 exceedance. And you can see um, how the Saharan dust was transported across the Atlantic Ocean um, into the Gulf and then circulated around through Mississippi, Alabama, and um, into Georgia and Florida, causing the exceedances. These are time series plots showing what's happening throughout, throughout the two days. And what we see here are high PM 2.5 concentrations starting on the afternoon of June 26th and then dropping on the evening of June 27th, leading to numerous exceedances on both, both of these days. And then the final one I'll talk about again, which is a little unique, is um, July 5th, 2020 in Atlanta, um, where the exceedance was due to fireworks. Um, so this is a map showing the concentrations, the high concentrations in downtown Atlanta at 45 micrograms per cubic meter. The time series plot here um, at the United Avenue, as well as the second highest monitor, uh, which was also um, in the Atlanta area. And both of them showed increasing concentrations starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, when the sun set and people started lighting fireworks. And then the, the fireworks ended, but the smoke um, was trapped um, in, the, in the boundary layer until the next morning um, when the boundary layer started to lift and we had some mixing to clear it out. So um, the exceedance occurred on July 5th, uh, which is really due to the fireworks that were lit off on the evening of July 4th. Um, next, I'm going to talk about the fact that there has been no PM 2.5 exceedances in 2020 due to wildfires or prescribed fires, which is a very big deal. As I presented earlier, um, this is the first, time, first year in a long time that we have not had any exceedances due to wildfires or prescribed fires. And um, some of the reasons for this are in early 2020, um, the meteorology was less conducive for burning compared to previous years. Um, so I, I talked to uh, Georgia Forestry Commission and they passed that information along to me. But also what I think is even the more important um, reason as has been talked about many times already this morning is there were few, fewer prescribed burns due to COVID-19. Um, when the burns were done, the unit burn sizes were smaller due to COVID-19. And I think most importantly, uh, more care was taken by the fire managers to minimize the impact of smoke on communities due to the COVID-19, knowing that, um, that any bit of smoke getting into these communities could um, enhance any type of illness that was caused by COVID-19. So uh, those are the reasons why we have not seen any exceedances this year. I'm gonna finish up with two slides on the, on the, on the uh, PM and the ozone standards. So the PM standards are currently being reviewed by EPA. They're required to be reviewed every five years by EPA and determine if the current standard is adequate or if it needs to be lowered. So EPA staff have put together a policy assessment and the EPA staff scientists recommended that the standard for PM 2.5 should be lowered. Um, also, the, the EPA policy assessment and science was re reviewed by the Clean Air Science Advisory Committee um, which is the group that's responsible for making technical and policy recommendations on, to EPA on the National Ambient Air Quality Standards. And um, I'm actually part of the, the KSAC panel that reviewed uh, the standard. And in this review, five of the six KSAC members recommended retaining the standard. So this was contrary to what the EPA staff recommendation was. And one of the six KSAC members recommended lowering the standard in agreement with the EPA staff. But ultimately, it's the EPA administrator who makes the decision whether to retain or lower the standard. And in, um, in April of this year, the EPA administrator proposed to retain the, the standard. Also, for the 24-hour uh, standard and the um, PM10 standard and the secondary standard, everybody was in agreement that it should be retained. For the ozone standard, um, the EPA staff policy recommendation was to re retain the current standard of 70 parts per billion. Uh, six of the seven KSAC members agreed with retaining the standard. One of the seven KSAC members recommended lowering the standard. And then in uh, July of this year, 
the EPA administrator proposed to retain the, the current standard. For the secondary ozone standard, everybody was in agreement that it should be retained. And then my summary slide is um, current PM 2.5 measurements are well below the EPA air quality standards, so that's good news. Over the past five years, prescribed fires and wildfires contribute to most PM 2.5 exceedances, but they have not caused any exceedances in 2020. EPA has proposed to retain the current ozone and PM 2.5 standards. EPA will finalize the standards in late 2020 or early 2021. And since they're proposed to retain them, most likely the uh, final rules will retain them. And if they do, um, we're well below them for PM 2.5 and for ozone, um, we, have, we are likely coming into attainment um, it, um, in Atlanta with ozone this year. So in, in general, it's looking very good. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, the impacts of fires have, have gone down significantly this year, and that's a kudos to everyone who's been taking care of with uh, managing smoke. And with that, I would like to say thank you, and I've included my contact information if anyone has any um, questions they would like to follow up with me with. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for those good words, stuff we all need to know before we light the match. So uh, uh, we'll take it all, take it to heart. And there will not be any Q&A after this session. So, Shan, you're off the hook. Uh, now we're going to take a break for our virtual lunch. Uh,